Hey guys, I'm lecturing this week on APA in-text citations when you're citing the sources as you're writing your paper and, and making, you know, those little parenthetical citations to reference or point to your references page in APA format. Um, in the video, I'm going to talk about the differences between MLA and APA in-text citations because I think sometimes when you're so used to doing MLA format, um, Either we can get stuck in that mode or it's like, how do I distinguish between the two? So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm going to show you the places in your book where you can find more information. Um, I will talk about some of the main, most common ways to incorporate and integrate citations into your sentence structure. Um, I'm going to give you um, some information on using timestamps. I'd say if you've never used APA in-text citations, it's definitely different. Um, and there's a lot of things to consider. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, that's normal. Ask me questions. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is the difference between MLA and APA in-text citations. What I'm looking at here is a table of MLA in-text citation notes and examples compared to the counterpart in APA format. Um, what I have done, if you can see the colors on your screen, what I have done is anything that is green means it's basically the same as MLA. APA and MLA do the same thing here. If it's yellow, then that means some of it is a little bit the same, but some of it is different. And if it's red, it's completely different. It's something that was either not done at all in MLA or it's done totally differently in APA. So I'm gonna go through these quickly, but then we'll also kind of recap some of this stuff in the next page as well. One of the things that MLA and APA have in common with in-text citations is if you have access to an author's last name, then you will list it in your parenthetical citation or in your lead-in phrase. You can see that here, Smith 4, and then of course Smith is listed in the APA in-text citation. If you have multiple authors, however, so if you have more than one, um, MLA and APA vary a little bit. So there are times where they would be exactly identical. If you had more than six authors in APA format, you would go straight to using that phrase at all. However, anything between three to six or I guess three to five authors, then the first time you list the source, you write out all of the author's names and then any subsequent source where you're writing about it in your paper, if you need to put a citation, you use at all. Um, one of the things that is new in APA format is the year. So in MLA format, we never listed the year in um, any in-text citation, but in APA format, it's required. If there is a year, you will list the year. If there is no year, you will even list N period, D period for no date. Just say, hey, I didn't forget. There's just not an associated date. Um, the page number, you will list page numbers if you have access to them. If you do have page numbers, it's formatted slightly differently. So remember in AP or in MLA format, you didn't have to have any kind of signifier like the word page or P period or anything like that. However, in APA format, um, they do ask that you use that signifier. So if you had one page, it would be P period. If you had multiple pages, it would be PP period. Um, and similar to MLA, if your article that you're looking at doesn't have page numbers, but it has paragraph numbers, literally the paragraphs are numbered on the document, then you could provide para period and the, the paragraph number. Um, but I don't think that this is very common, so you might not find that you even would need to do that. Internal punctuation is very different from MLA. MLA required no commas to separate the last name and the page number. However, APA says you need to have commas to separate the last name from the <clears throat> 
year and to separate the year from the page number. Now, there's something else that will be different as well. If you decide to use the year in your lead-in phrase, or excuse me, if you decide to use the author in your lead-in phrase, then you have to bring the year with it. Um, and in that case, the punctuation that I guess you might call internal punctuation is the year will be surrounded in parentheses. Here in the parenthetical citation at the end of a quote, for example, it's everything is in parentheses, um, but the year will always be in parentheses no matter where it is in your paper. External punctuation is going to be the same with your in-text citations. So when you write your parenthetical citations at the end of a quote, you will always put that period all the way at the end. I, I think this is just a, a grammatical convention of most citation styles. Um, the signal phrase verb tense. So when you're introducing a source, APA says use the past tense or use the present perfect tense. That looks like either something along the lines of Smith explained, past tense, or present perfect, like Smith and others have explained. Or if you just had a, a single author, then you'd use the single present perfect verb tense, like Smith has explained. All right, so email me if you have questions about that. Now I'm, I'm just kind of going through the basics. And I think that was like the pre-basics, the differences there. Here are just the basics. So um, remember your in-text citations require that you cite the author's last name, the year, and the page number where the information was found if you have access to that. Again, if you have a bunch of um, social media sources, you're not going to have a page number. Totally fine. You just, you skip that. Um, any variations to this rule might happen if you have more than one author. If you don't have an author. Um, so if the source doesn't have a named author, um, if the source doesn't have a page number, and then if the source does not have a publication year. So there are variations to this that you will find in your textbook. Um, one of the things that um, uh, you will notice, the trend I want you to pick up on, is that the author and the year are always right next to each other. Whether you decide to use the author in the signal phrase, or whether you decide to use the author in the ending parenthetical citation, the year comes with it. They are like tethered together. They will always be with each other. They're handcuffed. They can never be separated. Um, the, it will be author, immediately following the author, it will be the year. You'll see, you'll see this trend on this page. If you decide to have a signal phrase and a quote and a parenthetical citation, you have a couple of options. You can incorporate the author's name in just the parenthetical citation and say something like according to the text. And again, if that's the case, you have author's name, the year immediately following it, and then a page number. However, if you decide to incorporate the author's name in that signal phrase, then the year comes with it. Never, not ever, ever, would you have Bullock et al., for example, so Bullock and others, expl explained, and then the quote, and then 2015. You would never push them that far apart. They're, again, they're tethered together. They have to be right next to each other. Um, he has stated, again, Jones, 2015. This would be an example of a source that does not have page numbers. Alternatively, if you prefer that name or the, the author in the lead-in phrase or the signal phrase, then you can uh, format your sentence like this. So I'm just giving you a bunch of grammatical options for this. Um, you, these, all of these incorporate commas in between the verb of the signal phrase and the quote. However, as we talked about in the MLA unit, you can also use the word that in lieu of a comma. So here you could use, the text has reminded readers that you have three options, etc. la la la. Um, that is used for all of these. These look identical to the ones we just talked about, but they use that instead of a comma. Um, you can also have a signal sentence instead of a lead-in phrase. So we've, we've talked about this before. If you're going to use a signal sentence before your quote, then you need to use a colon to separate that signal sentence in the quote. In APA, it's this, the rule still exists that you shouldn't have a naked quote or a quote that's all by itself. It needs to have something of your words 
attached to it, even if it's just a small, quick paraphrase, like documentation can vary, colon, then you see this. Um, again, you have options. You can include the author and year in the parenthetical citation all the way at the end, or you can include the author and year at the beginning. Again, they're always gonna to be together. They're never gonna be separated. Here is something our textbook covers. APA says that the passive voice is okay. Um, APA says that if you want, you can end a sentence with a signal phrase instead of beginning your sentence with a signal phrase. So you could present that quoted, or in this case, paraphrased material um, before the signal phrase and then provide the signal phrase at the end and then a parenthetical citation. If that's the case, again, the <clears throat> author and the year are still right next to each other, but it does kind of look like it would be, it looks as if it would be acceptable to separate them, but it is absolutely not. They are, again, they're still buddies. They are right next to each other. So here's a couple of examples of what I mean by this. So it's okay to say something like, documentation can vary in three ways according to Bullock at all. Then you have your citation. It's not that you, can't, you cannot ever take this phrase and break it apart from the year. You can't do, now this isn't quite formatted beautifully, but you cannot do this. The only reason it's okay to have the year in the, the final um, parenthetical citation is because we put that author right at the end, right next to it. I hope this makes sense, but if you don't see the difference, please let me know. Um, here's another example, and this is using the passive voice. The idea that there is still plenty of time to have fun has been suggested. There's that present perfect tense that that might be the past part, I don't know, whatever. Uh, the idea that there is still plenty of time to have fun has been suggested by Jones 2015. Now, we don't have a page number, but if we did, it would look similar to what you see up here with the year and then the page number. And again, I'm not telling you that it would be acceptable um, to put the, like in, in a sentence like this, for example, it is not okay to have 2016 here, this is not all right, can't do this. The only reason that this is acceptable, the parenthetical is acceptable in this example we just looked at, is because the author is right here. And if that's the case, this is what it should look like. <laughs> it won't be two parentheticals back to back. APA says, nope, that's redundant. That's too many extra punctuations. We don't like that. I think originally, um, maybe not originally, but I think this is the idea. And then they see these parentheses open and close right next to each other. And they say, oh, that doesn't look good. So it is better to use a comma. But what is actually happening here is, again, you're putting in parentheses, the author or the year right next to the author. So this, again, cannot do this, can't separate them up because Bullock et al. is not right here. If it were, you could do it, but it is not. So we have to keep that year in parentheses right after the author. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Please, again, email me if it doesn't. I'm going to move on. I am not by any means covering everything that you need to know on APA and text citations. There may be instances that you come across that you have to use your book in order to figure them out. Of course, if you have questions about them, please, please email me. Um, in my past experiences with students writing this paper, here are, honestly, most of the things in the book are going to be helpful or possibilities for you. I, I think I skipped I skipped two, <laughs> 12 and 13. Um, but <clears throat> author named in signal phrase, we talked about it above. Author named in parentheses, we talked about that below. Um, if you have authors with the same last name, if your source has two authors, then you will list them both. But if your source has three or more authors, then you, you know, you'll do what we talked about on page one with first time list all the authors, second time um, list 
just the first author with et al. But then of course, if it's like six or more, you will always use et al. If you're using an organization or government as an author, if you have an article online that doesn't have an author, now we'll talk this week about credibility, but um, if you find that the source is credible, it's not by a government author, but there's also no stated author or username, then um, there is an option for you there. If you are making claims about multiple, there's a way to do it and it's really simple and it uses uh, semicolons to separate out each citation within the parentheses. Um, we are going to talk about what happens if you want to cite in your paper and on your references page two or more works cited by the same author in the same year. There's something else you'll have to do in your references page and then in your in-text citation, so that will change a little bit. Um, there's a quoted in option, although it is not written the same as in MLA. In MLA, we write like QTD in. In APA, it's something like as cited in. So it's just different phrasing. Um, a work without page numbers. We talk a little bit about that up there. You kind of just skip them. But what if you had paragraph numbers or something else? And then social media. The APA style blog also talks about timestamps and incorporating those as in-text citations if you are looking at a time-based source. So that would be anything like a movie, documentary, YouTube video. Um, and it's only going to matter if you are quoting from a part of or portion of that, of that video. Paraphrases should have citations. Quotes must have page numbers. Okay, um, so when you are quoting from a video, you need to provide a timestamp of where the quote began. Um, if the entire video is very short, like a 10 second video, and the entire time the video is playing, it's the quote that you've quoted, then you do not need to have a timestamp because the point of a timestamp is for your reader to go to that video and jump ahead to that point in time to hear the quote and to understand the context of what's happening. So if it's a 10 second video, that's not necessary. If it's a 30 second video and your quote happens from uh, 25 to 28 seconds in, then Use your best judgment, but I would say, yeah, put a timestamp for that. So, according to the APA style blog, to cite a direct quotation from an audiovisual source, include a timestamp in the in text citation alongside the author and date indicating the point at which the quotation begins. If it's a, a long portion of the video, let's say it's a speech and you're quoting a bit a bit of it and the person pauses a lot maybe, um, you do not have to have the, the range. You only need to present the timestamp of where the quote began. And if you notice here on your screen regarding the timestamp, this is where the page number usually would follow. And all you need is whatever information you have. So in MLA, if you didn't have um, hours or minutes and it was just seconds, you still put like zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, colon, 26. However, in APA, if it's four minutes and 50 seconds, you just put four, colon, five, zero, as you see here. You don't even need that zero before four in order to indicate that it's four minutes. So I think APA is saying, let's take up a little less space. Um, let's assume that our reader has some knowledge of an understanding of, of what it is that they're looking at here. Whereas MLA wants it to be extremely precise and with, without any, any question at all. Um, so just use your best judgment regarding getting timestamps. So here's my hypothetical scenario many students encounter, and this really relates to um, if you have two or more works cited by one author in the same year. So according to the APA style blog, and I link this page I'm gonna be looking at down here at the bottom of these notes. <clears throat> according to the APA style blog, if you have multiple citations from the same author in the same year, regardless of the month or the day, then you will alpha, alphabetize the entries by title 
or if it's a social media post, then by the content of that post. And add a lowercase letter after the year, okay? <laughs> even if there's no date, you will even have a lowercase letter. So here's where you could run into this scenario. If you are citing multiple social media sources by the same person published in the same year, even if they were published on different days, then you need to employ this strategy of the little, the, what I call the baby letters. Um, if you are citing multiple YouTube videos published by the same YouTube account or the same username, um, handle, whatever you want to call it, person, published in the same year, then you need to use this strategy because APA says years are most important. Even if it's on different days, the year is what controls whether or not you need to have the little baby numbers, or letters, excuse me, the little baby letters. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say I, I'm citing on my references page two tweets by JK Rowling. Both of them are from the same person, um, and both of them are published in the same year. So how are we going to know, how is my reader going to know which citation I'm referring to um, just by looking at my in-text citation? Well, you might feel like it's obvious if this is a social media post and you're quoting from it, can't your reader just read through your references and find the one that, that they're looking for? In theory, sure, they could, but APA says that's too tedious. What if you had, what if your entire paper and you were writing a, let's say you're, you're writing an APA formatted book and the entire book was all about J.K. Rowling, here's our example, was all about J.K. Rowling and her Twitter posts and just analyzing everything that has to do with J.K. Rowling and how she uses social media. Then you are likely going to have cited at the end of your book in your references section I don't know, 50 to 100 social media posts by J.K. Rowling, are you going to expect your reader to go and dig through every single one of those to find that reference that they would need in order to go then find the tweet or something like that? No, that's unreasonable. It's, again, much easier to say, okay, here's a whole bunch of J.K. Rowling references. Here's the year you're looking for. I'm giving you, this is the reference for C year 2018 C. That's just so much faster. It's going to be in alphabetical order. So it's really easy to catalog, really easy to find. That's a goal here. Um, <clears throat> so keep that in mind. Even though I'm showing you examples, it looks basic. Um, just imagine this times 100. All right, so you've written this sentence in your paper. JK Rowling has often criticized Britain's split from the EU, also known as Brexit, and she takes to social media to influence others. Okay, so again, it's clear, if I only have to look at two sources, it's clear that this is the source to which I am referring, um, because this one she's talking about being a writer. But again, what if there were hundreds and thousands? So what exactly am I referring to in my paper, and how do I handle then the in-text citation? I don't have a page number, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm really looking at author and year. Here are, based on the two bits of information I've given you, what the references would look like. Yes, like I said before, you do have the content of the tweet here. It's, it's so short and small. Um, I've put all of it. Everything else is mostly the same. Yes, these are posted on very different days, but um, your, <clears throat> your in-text citation should have again, based on the year, that little lowercase letter in order to tell your reader, hey, this is from um, 2019B, that's the associated source. Now, uh, I, I feel like when you look at it, it's pretty self-explanatory, but there's something that I had to ask myself as well, particularly regarding the references page. Um, are, does this citation come first because it was posted on January 7th and this was posted on January 10th? So is it, is it because of the consecutive or like the time or 
does this source come first because I comes before S in the alphabet in because of ABC order? Always, 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 the answer is ABC order. Not ever year um, or date. That being said, that's why this one gets an A and this one gets a B because this citation comes first and this citation comes second. So you have to use alphabetical order in order <laughs> to assign letters to your years. So I think that covers everything. If you guys have questions, you know what to do.